All right, looking at the next one, we are doing next steps after indeterminate form finding limits. So we should remember indeterminate form means we're getting zero over zero. It's important to kind of recognize vocabulary. And let's read through it. Uh, Louisa tried to find the limit as we go to negative seven from both sides of uh, this function. And she plugged it in and she got zero over zero. Okay, so for Louisa's next step, which method would be applied here? Which method? All right. So then we're taking a look at what we got here. We got, we're assuming that we got zero over zero. That's the assumption here. And let's look at our answers. Should we factor and cancel? Okay. So already that kind of looks like a good step here. The first thing that I see when I look at this is there's a common X and a common three on the bottom. And then, uh, I would assume that this top probably factors and then we can cancel out the issue. But that would be the next step is we would have to factor to see what happens. So that would be my best guess. Let's just look at the rest of the answers. Rationalization using conjugates. So conjugate, usually they have uh, two terms with something kind of strange going on with those two terms. Like usually it's a square root sign for this one. So I would say no. Uh, the conjugates, conjugate's not going to help us in any, any way here. We're trying to uh, get rid of any of the strange issues, and conjugate wouldn't help us with that. And then do we have trigonometric functions, alternate forms of trigonometric functions? And then you would want to probably try to factor or cancel using those trig functions. So factorization and cancelization. Next one. Uh, let's look at those answers again, but we can kind of jump right through into the answer here. So here's what I was saying. Notice that we have a square root. Uh, the problem's exactly the same type of format. So we have a square root up here, <clears throat> and then uh, we would want to try in some way to use the conjugate to see if it helps us get something that can cancel out uh, this like x plus 3 we're going to negative three. So I'm assuming when we use the conjugate, we'll probably get an X plus three. Um, if we did, if we got it to cancel, then uh, we would, that would probably give us our answer. If it didn't cancel, it, it would probably mean it's uh, an issue there and asymptotic. So in this case, uh, we're not gonna factor. There's nothing to factor here. We're assuming it's rationalization of conjugates and are we using trig, no trig involved. Let's look at the answers before I skip too much. It's probably just what I'd said. Uh, yeah, we want something that looks like trinomials and binomials. Conjugates, that's square roots usually. Um, we want trigonometry for the trig functions. So everything's in order. And notice we have trig functions, so we would try to use alternate forms.